certainly it hangs over the Yankees right now. And with Judge having his issue, that's another thing that they're dealing with that is not great. And I don't have to tell you guys, anytime you go from an, for an MRI. FT Live. Ken Rosenthal, FT Senior Insider, joining us right now. Ken, where are you at? Oh, I was going to ask on your spring training tour, but the Marlins are giving it away. How is fish camp? I'd like to announce that Sandy Alcantara is on the way back. This is the best <laughs> concert, that's why I'm not acting like that. Fish camp's fine. Uh, they're as enthusiastic as they can be, and obviously – Trevor knows this. Eric knows this. Every team is happy at this time of year. No one's lost a game. Everyone's optimistic. This team, to me, needed to spend more money this offseason. Needed to do more than just sign Tim Anderson. They didn't do that. They're coming off a playoff appearance. They were a team that needed to be supplemented so they can continue the momentum. Maybe they will, but they've had some injury issues come up, and we'll just see, see how it goes. Now, now you said that kind of tongue-in-cheek, but you're in that camp right now. Like, yeah, yeah, I know there's there's nobody more optimistic and and positive than Skip Schumacher, but he's also honest. What kind of talks did you have with Skip? Skip is going to be optimistic, as you know, that's his personality. But he knows too that they're in a tough division with the Phillies and the Braves for sure. The Mets perhaps taking a step back. Nationals still building, but getting better. And he knows there's a challenge ahead. And let's face it, no manager after an offseason like the one they had is going to sit here and tell me, man, we totally punted. We stunk. No, <laughs> that's not the way they're going to look at it. They're going to look at what they have here, right, and try to build with what is a pretty talented core. Tim Anderson is here. That's one thing they're, ha they're happy about. They're high on him. They feel that he's going to have a big bounce back season. I spoke with Tim this morning. He's very optimistic, and that's something to watch for sure because that guy, when he is right, is one of the more dynamic players in the game. We saw it last year in the WBC. He gets hurt early in the season, his knee, and it was never the same. So that's something definitely to watch, but I worry about the power now that Soler is gone and just what the offense is going to be. Have you heard any rumors there or talked to anybody that – kind of explained why the offseason went the way it did? Was this the plan to spend $5 million the whole offseason? Well, I wrote about this, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago, a month ago, Eric. And the plan was, under the new general manager, Peter Bendix, to fix the infrastructure, farm system, international scouting, amateur scouting, everything that goes into building an organization. And that's where they put their resources this offseason. And he came in with that mission. That's why he was hired. We want you to upgrade our infrastructure and get us on the right path. My contention in what I wrote and even now is, why can't you do two things at once? Why can't you fix the infrastructure and help the major league team? And that's where there is a divide and it's certainly a path they've taken and maybe it serves them well in the long term. It's the best way for them to go rather than maybe do some short-term deals that aren't going to benefit them that greatly. But again, they're coming off a playoff appearance. And that's where I have a problem with it. You're coming off a playoff appearance. You have some momentum in a market where you struggled, honestly. And here you have the chance to captivate your fans and keep them engaged. I don't know that they did enough to do that. A team that needs to maybe understand what happens from an MRI. Have you heard anything about Cole's MRI, anything that is like any new news in that? Or is this a camp thing that is just hanging over the Yankees right now? No new news. And you heard Aaron Boone say yesterday it's going to be a couple of days. Certainly it hangs over the Yankees right now. And with Judge having his issue, that's another thing that they're dealing with that is not great. And I don't have to tell you guys, anytime you go from an, for an MRI, it's a concern. Period. It's a concern. Now, maybe it turns out he's okay and misses a little time or maybe no time at all. But at the same time, there's a reason why they sent him for the MRI because he wasn't bouncing back from relatively short appearances the way he wanted to. That, to me, is a concern. 
That said, Garrett Cole's been one of the healthiest aces in the game for a long time. I don't believe he's ever been on the injured list for an arm injury. So that history gives you some encouragement, but you never know with pitchers, and it's definitely a concern. Yeah, it's, it's something, especially when with guys who've pitched this long, this many innings, uh, some, this is going to happen eventually. Uh, Chris Sale did the same thing for like eight or nine years, and then, you know, sometimes you just need a, you need to take, it, take care of some stuff. Uh, question in the same division, uh, and I think this is some of the most positive news that the baseball world got this uh, spring, is Joey Votto signing with Canada's team. Uh, Joey is now a Blue Jay. Um, have you heard anything on his chances of making this team and what kind of role he could play for them? Because it's Joey Votto. Having Joey Votto in a clubhouse at all is, I think, positive. Have you heard anything on that that side of things? Trevor, first of all, welcome. It's great to hey. you're here with us now. I'm really excited about it. His chances, I would imagine, are okay. Not necessarily for opening day, but going forward. Now, Daniel Vogelbach is in their camp. He is certainly the equivalent of Votto in terms of the position, the left-handed DH. Will he hold that job the whole year? I don't know. And maybe if he struggles and Joey gets hot in the minors, then they turn it over and they take a chance, or not take a chance, but bring Joey Votto to the major leagues. But he has said quite openly he expects to start in the minors, and I would think that's what's going to happen. It's not a lot of time to get ready for opening day, but... He's been working out, of course, and if he can get things going again. Remember, he's had a difficult time the last two years coming off a shoulder surgery. If he can find himself again, and he thinks he can, that's kind of a key for me here. He believes that he is not done. Then you might see a situation where he is on that roster at some point. Who knows what might happen? What if there's an injury? All kinds of things can happen. But this is not a publicity stunt. This is for real. And again, the thing that stands out to me is he didn't want to be told he was done by the game. He wants to go out and see whether he's done and determine it that way. Now, it might be that the Jays end up saying, Joey, it's not happening. And I think he'll know it at that point. But he feels there's more in there. And that's why this is happening. You had said on fair, fair, fair territory that he would maybe go to Buffalo. And you kind of insinuated that right now. Is there a chance he doesn't go to Buffalo and goes to maybe, say, stays at the complex there in Florida because of how freaking freezing it is in April? There's one thing I know, and it's minor league stadiums in April, and they stink. So is there a chance he stays in Florida, or does the team really want him to see that AAA pitching? I can't say I know the answer for sure, Eric. I have not heard that, but what you're saying makes a lot of sense. They play in Syracuse, right? Or is it Buffalo? They're no, they're in something. Buffalo now. Yeah. Oh, they're Buffalo. <laughs> well, neither is great, right? And the International <laughs> League in general has a lot of cold weather in April. That said, at some point in the Major League season, April is not a great month either in many places. So I don't know how they're going to do it. I would expect he would want the best competition he can face until he gets to the point where he's on the verge, perhaps a return to the major leagues but i don't know and eric actually that's a question i should ask because it's a good one hey ken question for you about where we're at in the season of course we've talked a ton about you know those two big names um well i tried to go a show without saying them but we already said them earlier yeah you did and, and monty and maybe and tomorrow. blake snell so maybe tomorrow i'll try again but i actually am also noticing there haven't a ton of extensions I, I don't you know have an exact stat to it but I don't know if you feel like we've been a little bit light on that front as well you know often we get to a point right now and we're close to the season starting where players show up to camp they're excited oh I want to be here long term and conversations go down Brian Bayo was the big one that was announced in the Dominican Republic series last weekend but other than that maybe one or two others Wheeler. not a ton Wheeler right got done but Cole Keith Cole Keith was more in the winter. Okay, so thank you, Craig. But three, not not ten. <laughs> no, no, yeah, not not the whole Braves. <laughs> it's a good question, Scott. And granted, we have a good amount of time before opening day still. So I would expect that there will be more extensions. There generally always are. And as we get closer to opening day, that sometimes drives the momentum because agents, players, teams want these things resolved before the season gets started. But 
you're right. To this point, there haven't been maybe the usual number. I don't track them by date that way. But you're right. It seems like at this point. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't do my Twins fans uh, a service here and and ask a Twins question. You wrote recent oh, wrote no. article about Chris <laughs> Paddock. You know I can do that now, uh, which is nice. <laughs> Whatever you want, uh, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, you wrote an article about Chris Paddock. Uh, one of the things that I I've been looking at with the team is just kind of where is the starting pitching depth after Pablo Lopez? He Looks like he's going to be one of those things. And you wrote a great article about it. Check it out on The Athletic, guys, if you haven't yet. Uh, but where do the Twins see uh, Paddock fitting in this year? And and what kind of uh, what kind of workload do you anticipate that being? Because, you know, he still still hasn't thrown many innings here in the last couple of years. Right. And in a perfect world, he kind of becomes their number two starter. Now, they've lost Maeda. They've lost Sonny Gray. So there are holes in that rotation. they still got Joe Ryan, Bailey Ober some younger pitchers as well that they're high on. But they sort of need Paddock to step up. Now, the question you raised about workload is sort of the big one. Let's say he's really good, and this is the optimal scenario, that you get the Chris Paddock of 2019, the kid who showed up in San Diego and kind of captivated baseball for a time. Okay, that's great. But how many innings can he go? He's only thrown about 40 combined the last two years with the Tommy John surgery, hybrid surgery in between. So he knows, the Twins know that chances are he's not going 180. He might not go 160. He might not even go 140. But the way it was described to me and the way I wrote it is that they're going to kind of play it by ear, see how he's progressing. One thing he has in his favor, he built up all last season, of course, became that guy in the playoffs who was really good against Houston in relief. And they feel that he has a bit of a foundation under him. Now, it's not going to translate to 200 innings, as I just said. But can they get him to, I'm just picking a number out of thin air, 120 and then have him available for the playoffs? That would be their ideal, I would think. Something along those lines. And we'll just have to see how it goes. How he pitches, how he bounces back. All the things that go into it when you have a pitcher who has had a second major elbow reconstruction and needs to be handled with care. Um, by the way, we will be at Twins Camp on Thursday, so we'll bring some of those players on. I actually requested Chris Paddock, interviewed him many times in the past. He's a really good interview. Um, usually is dressed in like something fun, cowboy hat. Like he's he's got a look, you know, Ken. <laughs> like you, yep. you show up, you're like Chris Paddock's here. So. Well, uh, we'll try and make that happen. Pitches in the regular season. I don't know if he's doing this in spring training. It's a suit. It's a cowboy hat. It's cowboy boots. And he's told me he's representing his state of Texas. And he is one of these guys that we need more of. He's got a refreshing personality. And he is someone who embraces the moment, kind of likes the whole scene. And, again, in 2019, he was a lot of fun. And I expect that if he's good again, we're going to see the same kind of thing. Spot on. Perfect for an FT interview. So uh, hopefully we'll line that up on Thursday uh, with Twins PR. Okay, let's finish with one fan question here in the super chat from Daniel. He said he loved your article on the Pirates. A lot of their position players have potential. How much of it is on the organization versus luck for them developing? Oh, I would say it's mostly on the organization. Now, you have some bad luck, of course, but... Well, that article was mostly, I would say, negative about the Pirates' situation, and particularly ownership and their inability or kind of refusal to spend in free agency. We did go into player development and how they haven't really succeeded in the way that, say, the Orioles have, drafting high. Now, Ben Sherrington, their general manager, made the point to me when we were putting that article together that he still believes they have a number of players they drafted during his tenure that are going to surface in the major leaguers and be quality contributors. And so far this spring, it's been pretty encouraging. Skeens was great when he was up. They sent him down, but that's to be expected. Henry Davis has had a big spring. And O'Neill Cruz is back now, and he's playing well. So you can start to see some things coming together, perhaps, but a lot is going to have to come together for them. And I'm interested to see how they play this year, but... 
in a division that really is there for the taking, if you go about it the right way, they have not been that team thus far. So it's time. It's Sherrington's fifth season coming up, and they need to take another step forward. Their owner, Bob Nutting, has said as much that they are in position now, they believe, to become a contending team in the NL Central. I'll believe it when I see it, but I'm not going to rule it out. Yeah, I'm feeling the same way. And for me, the luck is that somehow money is found to spend on free agents. I mean, I know we went over it a lot in the past, but their free agent history numbers are beyond embarrassing. I mean, they're yeah. crazy. You, you can't yes. expect to have a consistent winner or even a winner period when you're rebuilding, tanking, all that. And then you get to the point where you're finally ready and you're like, oh, but we don't believe in free agency. <laughs> that, that, that is mind blowing to me. Just to let people know what you're referring to, Scott, they have signed players to extensions from McCutcheon to Brian Reynolds. They've done that. They didn't do it with McCutcheon the second time, of course. They traded him. But in free agency, the biggest contract they've ever given to a free agent from outside the organization, not a guy that they already had, from outside the organization, Russell Martin, two years, $17 million, and that was about a decade ago. That is what you're talking about, Scott. That is embarrassing. I'm sorry. And you've got to do better than that. Yeah, I, I can't get over that stat. That is crazy. Look That's at Trevor's so reaction. He had no I'd idea. Never heard that before. That is hey. incredible. Until wow. until Key Brian Hayes got paid ten million dollars in the first year of his contract, nobody had made ten million more than ten million dollars from the Pirates. You everybody just knew you were going to get traded as soon as you were extension like Kutch is like well I can see the writing on the wall I'm about to make more than 10 million so he gone now they've wow. done some things this offseason they signed Chapman for 10 and a half they signed Martin Perez Yasmani Grandal they brought in some pieces now are they playing at the top of the market no they are not and that is essentially why they've been who they've been the last few years mm -hmm. okay good stuff thanks for answering the fan queue and we will see you uh, later this week Sounds good, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, also, Fair Territory is out there for the world, released in the past 24 hours. If you want to watch it on FT YouTube channel, wherever you get your pods. And we might have a special announcement regarding Ken and Fair Territory. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy baseball the way it should be covered.